Hello and welcome. Today we're going to work on financial accounting and accounting standards. This is an intermediate accounting topic and it's in chapter one. Hello, I'm Jeff Mankin from finallylearn.com and we help you learn financial literacy. So chapter one is introductory material and we have a good information about Accounting. Accounting is the identification, the measurement, communication of financial information about entities to interested parties. Could be outside the entity or inside the ent entity. So public or private information. Financial accounting is the preparation of financial reports on that entity. Could be a company, a nonprofit, a government agency. These financial reports or financial statements are used by both internal and external parties. All right, so our financial statements, we really have three plus the fourth one. So the first three we always would have, we always have a balance sheet, we always have an income statement, we always have a cash flow statement. Now for a for-profit company, we would have a stockholder's equity statement. We would not have that if we had a nonprofit company or a government agency. Let's look at the objectives of financial reporting. We have three main objectives. The first objective is we want to know the financial position of a company or entity. And so we're going to look at things like assets, liabilities, and equity. And the financial statement we would look at is the balance sheet. So the balance sheet shows a company's assets, liabilities, and equity. The second one, we care about cash flows. So cash flows would be cash receipts and cash payments. And that certainly is what's on the cash flow statement. So obviously we want more cash receipts than cash payments. And the third one is operating results. We want to look at things like revenues, expenses, and the profitability of our company. And that's going to be an income statement idea. And we're going to look at the income statement for that. So the reason we have three financial statements is because we want to look at the financial position of a company with the balance sheet, the cash flow situation of a company with the cash flow statement, and how well are we doing uh, operationally. So the operating results is the income statement. Now, chapter one talks about generally accepted accounting principles. So that's just the complete set of rules and procedures for accounting in the United States or for financial reporting. Now, two organizations that are important here. One is the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and it has legal authority to set all the accounting standards. However, it allows the FASB or the FASB which is the Financial Accounting Standards Board, to do most of the work. So most of the heavy lifting is done by the FASB, and the SEC takes an oversight role uh, because it has legal authority or statutory authority. Now let's talk about the FASB or the FASB. There have been three organizations, and it's the third of three, that set accounting standards in the United States. So the first one was called the Committee on Accounting Procedure. It lasted for 20 years, from 1939 to 1959. So the Committee on Accounting Procedures issued financial uh, reports, or financial um, guidance, rather, called the Accounting Research Bulletins, or ARBs. And then it was uh, replaced by the Accounting Principles Board from 1959 to 1973 and that organization issued APB opinions. Well, currently we have the Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB, from 1973 to the present. They issued different financial standards, but now their financial standards are called the Accounting Standards Updates. And it updates the codification. We'll talk about codification here in just a little bit. Now, internationally, we have the International Accounting Standards. And so the board, instead of being FASB, is the International Accounting Standards Board, the IASB. For 
the gap, it would be called International Financial Reporting Standards, or IFRS. That acronym is IFRS. So the IASB internationally is, this, is kind of the same thing as FASB is to the United States, and IFRS is the equivalent to GAP. So we have two systems. We have U.S. GAP, and we have IFRS, which is pretty much worldwide. Now, there's some challenges in financial reporting. Not everything is perfect, obviously, so these are uh, challenges that we have. One is the idea of too much politics in development of GAP. So to the extent politics is added in the GAP uh, process, that probably leads to suboptimal re results, and it's probably a different uh, result than what would financial results might be. There is what's called an expectations gap. An expectations gap is people think what accountants should do or what financial reporting should do versus what accountants or financial reports actually do. For example, um, it could be we think that accountants should uh, solve find fraud and that is a difficult thing to find. And so we have to be clear about what financial reporting does versus what it does not do try to reduce the expectations gap. One of the um, acts that tried to reduce that is the Sarbanes-Oxley Act to help improve financial reporting. Now, there's the third one is financial reporting does not report several things, things like non-financial measures because accounting is really a financial measurement and fin uses financial metrics. It does not provide forward-looking information like forecasts and budgets for the future. It is typically backward looking, which is the fourth one, timeliness. Let's skip that to that one. Timeliness is the idea, hey, it's backwards looking. The third one, it doesn't really report soft assets, like what is the value of an intangible, like a copyright or a trademark. Well, we don't really value that trademark maybe in a um, purely economic way. Also, it doesn't report non-financial assets. So companies, their employees might be the biggest asset. You might have heard that phrase before. The company's biggest asset might be employees. Obviously, that's a non-financial measure, and we don't have any number for that. Also, companies' reputation, companies' um, entire supply chain is a tremendous asset. But that's a non-financial financial asset that does not show up in any of the financial statements. The last one is the IFRS versus GAP. There's two sets of rules. So a company like Ford would report under GAP, U.S. GAP, and a company like Daimler-Benz would report under IFRS. It's two different sets of rules, slightly different but there's some, some differences that would cause uh, meaningful results that would be different. So that is a challenge in financial reporting. All right, let's look at the FASB codification. Several years ago, the FASB decided to put all the accounting standards in one particular place, and they made it a code, which is called the codification. It's organized with topics and then subtopics, and then sections, then paragraphs, and underneath paragraphs would be subparagraphs. Let me give you an example. For example, let's say the um, FASB ASC, so FASB Accounting Standards Codification 310. So topic is 310, and the name of that topic is receivables. So accounts receivables, notes receivables, and so on. The subtopic is 10, so that's the overall topic for uh, receivables. Then the section is 15, and so that section talks about the scope of this topic. And then we get down to paragraph 2, which is talking about transactions. And then subparagraph A would be trade accounts receivable. So. ASC 310-10-15-2A would be topic, subtopic, section, paragraph, subparagraph. Let me give you another example. The way you would cite this 
is if you just needed the topic, you say, hey, accounts receivables and notes receivables is shown in FASB ASC Topic 310. So there's the receivables. If you wanted to be more specific, you would say, let's look at subtopics. So we would say FASB ASC Subtopic 310-10. So that's receivables dash overall. And then the section would be 310-10-15 receivables overall scope. Now, generally, we don't go below that in terms of the, the labeling. We might say a specific reference would be paragraph 2 or subparagraph A. So this is how you cite it. This is how you use it in professional settings for a, an email or for a, um, some working papers or a document. All right, that's Chapter 1 in Intermediate Accounting. Stay tuned for more. And thanks for watching.